This is um, clip number two in my discussion of exchange rates. In the previous, in the previous clip, we um, I showed you the basic, simple uh, diagram of uh, the foreign exchange market. It's called uh, or labeled uh, Figure Thirty Seven One. And um, the purpose in, in this clip is to now sort of break this all apart. Cause it, the graph looks pretty simple. I mean, all it is is a red line going sort of up and to the right uh, uh, with an S on it for supply curve and a downward sloping green curve with a D on it standing for demand. So what's going on here? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So what, what's going on, first of all, is there's some simplifying assumptions. And I want to cover those first. And then I'm going to talk about the axes and then the curves. Okay? Because this is effectively a graph showing exchange rate determination. In other words, how do we, how does the exchange rate come into being? Okay, and this is based on a supply and demand analysis. In this analysis, we make, as I said, some simplifying assumptions. The first thing we do is we assume that there are only two countries in the world, um, in our little foreign exchange market here. We have Canada, the domestic country, and the Canadian currency, of course, is the Canadian dollar. The other country, the foreign country in this analysis, is going to be Japan. And the Japanese currency is called the yen. Okay. And we also refer to the uh, yen, in this case, as the foreign exchange. Okay. And because we're talking from the perspective of Canada, we can think of the yen as just like going out and buying any other commodity. And as I'll sh demonstrate in, uh, in a second, this is very similar to how the exchange rate is defined as well. It's just a price for a commodity, basically. Okay, so let's start with the horizontal axis across the bottom. It's labeled quantity of foreign currency. Okay, so this is basically just a scale that starts at zero at the uh, origin where the two axes the sort of split apart and then it gets bigger. So this is just the quantity of yens or foreign exchange. Now, the other axis, the vertical one, is labeled exchange rate, okay, or the price of yen in terms of dollars, okay? So basically what's going on here is they're saying, how much do I have to pay to buy one unit of foreign exchange. Okay, so do I have to pay, let's say, you know, one dollar Canadian to buy one yen? Do I have to pay two dollars Canadian to buy uh, one yen? So it's always, we're always saying, how much does it cost to buy one yen? One unit of foreign exchange. It's just like a price. Just like when you go into a store and you say to the, you know, the shopkeeper, you know, how much, you know, like what is the price of, you know, my, my baseball cap, right? Or you ask, what is the price of my, you know, Sin City 4 CD? It's the same thing. You're always asking, what is the price? How much do I have to pay to buy that? Except in the foreign exchange market, we're taking, you know, like these one dollar American bills and we're saying 
how much Canadian do I have to pay to buy that? And that's all that this is saying. Except instead of using um, American money as the foreign exchange, we're just looking at yens. So we're saying, how much does it cost to me in Canadian dollars to buy one unit of foreign currency or foreign exchange? Okay, and notice it's on a scale again. So it starts at zero and it goes up. Okay, so it, so in other words, at zero, it, it costs you nothing to buy uh, a unit of foreign currency. And then it might go to one. So that what that would mean on the scale is it costs you one dollar to buy one yen. And then if you go up to two, that means it costs you two dollars Canadian to buy one yen. And if you go up to three, then you have to pay three dollars Canadian to buy one yen, and so on. So what this axis shows you is um, graphically depreciation versus appreciation of currency. Right, Moving up that axis is in effect a depreciation of the Canadian dollar. Because as you move up, 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 you have to pay more Canadian dollars to buy one unit of foreign uh, currency. And as you move down, 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 the Canadian dollar is appreciating. So you have to pay fewer and fewer Canadian dollars to buy one unit of foreign exchange. Okay, so that's really what ap appreciation versus depreciation of the Canadian dollar means. Depreciation means you move up, up the axis, right, up the y-axis, and then that's, that's the depreciation. And then appreciation means you're moving down the y-axis back toward, towards the origin. Okay, that's, the origin's the point where they, the axes cross. Okay, so that in essence is what the axes are. The horizontal axis is just the quantity of yen. So it's, a, it's like counting up inventory. It's like working at a, like a shoe store. How many pairs of shoes do I have? The quantity of shoes. Well, this is the same thing. The quantity of yen. The quantity of foreign exchange. Okay? And then the vertical axis is just the price of that foreign exchange. In the middle is, of course, the supply and demand curves. And like all good economics, when the lines cross, that's the market equilibrium. And effectively, at that point where they do cross gives you the sort of uh, exchange rate that exists um, without any central bank intervention. It's the uh, uh, free floating exchange rate. Okay, so if you were to take that point where they cross and draw a horizontal line right back to the exchange rate, that is the exchange rate that would exist under a free floating um, system. Now, I'm going to stop this clip here and then I'm going to continue. I'm going to, I want to really inculcate you on what's this supply curve and demand curve because there are a little, there's a little bit more nuance than a simple supply and demand curve. Let's say if we were looking at um, uh, buying uh, consumer goods. Okay, there's a, there's a little trick to this because this is where we start tying in all that balance of payment stuff. It gets all wrapped in here, the capital account, current account. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna finish this now. Clip number three. We'll carry on on supply and demand in foreign exchange markets.